On the other side of the bridge is the statue of the Blessed Virgin. This is a new statue, the old one, worn and weather-beaten, after many years, was buried one night, secretly, by some of the local men, at a spot somewhere within the green grassy triangle where you see the crowd. procession is held to commemorate the statue's vigil. Now, from a statue to a crucifix, a well-known landmark on Botanic Road. It is, of course, in the grounds of the wooden chapel. This view is reminiscent of the Canadian backwoods. This view is from across the glass houses in the Botanic Gardens. The nearby bridge is also called Torca Bridge, but the name Glass Nevin is added. Wind and rain have taken effect here also. On the other side of the bridge is the new rose garden of the botanics. The bridge is still going strong. It stood its ground against serious floods throughout the years. During the war, like many other bridges, this one was prepared for demolition by the army, but they didn't have to disturb it. waterfalls may be connected some way with the name of another well-known Glass Nevin landmark. And here is that landmark, the Washerwoman's Hill. The trams laboriously climbed this rather steep hill but the downward run was much faster. And on this corner, many years ago, one of the trams overturned. Church Avenue, with its sturdy church, the graveyard, and the quaint old schoolhouse. Movi Boreen. Boreen, as you know, means a little or small road. That now will bring us to the smallest house. No, it is not St. Anthony's, but that one in the middle, the smallest house in the city. Now for the smallest street in Dublin. You have the name. Now count the steps of those two men and that's the street for you.
Now, take a last look at the smallest street, because it was taken down later. This horse got into the picture to add the final old Dublin touch. Now, while we're here, let's take a look around. Some shops are still going strong. Many more are gone. That one was Johnny Fox's, where you could either buy or sell anything from a needle to an anchor.